Thank you, Madam Chair, and, uh, and thank you, uh, experts, for being here and the testimony, the discussion we're having today. You know, I'm excited about what's happening in agriculture. I mean, the STEM demand there is, uh, is rapidly growing, and as a result of that, we're, we're able to produce, and if we're going to feed 50 billion people here in some time, uh, that's certainly important. And um, then I just, wanted to, I just wanted to share with you, because uh, uh, all of you have mentioned various aspects of this, but, but I'm a kind of a practical individual, and I know when I started my Ph.D. program, it went back to when I was in high school, uh, even prior to that. And so you mentioned earlier attraction down to K-12. Uh, but I had teachers that rec recognized some skills or, or some skills, some uh, aspect that I might have, and they thought, and they encouraged me, and even had that in high school. And so my point here is being that then as I, as I got to college and um, managed to get into some of the courses, then I got interested, and I became increasingly interested, and that, that ended up resulting in the Ph.D., so my, my point is a, a couple of these. Um, one, I'd like for you to comment on how we encourage the education program to stimulate these young, pigs, uh, young people like I'm talking about. And then uh, the other thing that you, you might also comment on, uh, I really like the idea of the community colleges. It gives some of these uh, individuals the opportunity to get a flavor for that kind of education without investing a lot of money and then it also gives them the opportunity to decide, you know, what kind of engineer we want or what kind of a, a, a degree we want. It gives them the exposure to that without having to make a lot of investments. So, so I guess my two questions are uh, how, do, how do we encourage the education system to do what I mentioned? And uh, secondly, the community college idea. If I can make just two quick comments. The reason I'm a scientist today and I, I know that this is a fact, is I went to a girls' school my entire life. So I didn't, incur, I didn't encounter anyone who told me that I couldn't do math and science until I got to college. And by that time, I was so sure I was going to be a scientist that I said to that professor, well, what's wrong with you if you don't think I can be a scientist? And so, but, but the girls' school I went to, it's not a girls' school anymore. So, I, you know, this is why I think for attracting minorities into the sciences, I'm really keen on supporting the historically black colleges and universities. I think that they will also provide that safe place for minority students to get involved in science and uh, engineering without anyone telling them they're not supposed to do that, and their professors all look like them, and they can tell them, yeah, you should be doing this. It's good for you. Let me add an optimistic note. So we, we tend to focus when we see these gaps and these crises that you know we have to reinvent our system of higher education. We have to look at how we do better. And look, some of this is great because we're going to innovate some new approaches. But um, we're, we're stressed about this because the global competition's gotten really tight. And the reason it's tight is those countries are basically copying the U.S. system. So I just want to point out, you know, they're, they're running up against us simply because they're doing exactly what we're doing and they're trying to do everything the Americans do. Um, I think that means we have to, you know, we have to get a little smarter. I, the one thing I was going to, you know, just an observation, you know, I mentioned uh, early on Sputnik. You know, one of the big moments in U.S. history when as a country, we really focused on the role of science and, and people getting excited, and, and there was a, a remarkable investment that was made, but there was also a remarkable amount of passion and belief that came. That wasn't just because science was cool. I mean, a lot of us were excited because we either saw somebody in our lives who was a scientist or we just thought it was really interesting, but there was a national call to serve, and it was a way where people believed they could contribute to their country and I always go back to, you know, when I was at NIST, we had five of our scientists win Nobel Prizes, which was remarkable. It's not that big of an agency. And, but the untold story was all five of them stayed there. They could have quadrupled their salary going somewhere else. And I remember talking to them and asking, why did you stay? 
And they said, there's great problems, that's a scientist in them, great colleagues, and it was a chance to make a difference and serve our country. And I think that's something that our science policy can create that almost no one else can, is how is this vital to our national interest? How, because people want to make a difference. There's a common theme in, in what you've just heard, which is experiential learning. I think if you actually expose a young person to the coolness of solving problems, regardless of which they are, then all the other hard stuff are tools that they learn in order to do the cool stuff. But if the primary mission becomes you're going to actually be learning all this hard stuff for the sake of learning it, I don't know anybody really who wants to do it. And I think if I was to rethink the education, one of the things that I think we do much better in industry is we take these young graduates and we put them on to real problems. And that becomes aspirational, whether it's putting a man on the moon or in my current job, feeding the world's population of seven billion people with a billion hungry in a sustainable manner, so it doesn't take away from the next generation, or my new job, which is how do we make the billion plus people that are aging to stay healthy and functional in society rather than being a burden on society. That problem will attract very bright minds. And I think we have to think experiential goal-oriented learning. Thank you very much.